no body movement, no hip, no center of gravity. He grabs. Getting a little old. Okay? It's the same thing if he's standing up. If I like if I don't break his center, nothing's gonna happen. But this is just, we call this just uh, washing the dish or something. Excuse me. And I don't want you to fall from me, but it's inside. That's a principle. It is not a technique. The second one we're going to build is one. The second one we'll break center. Huh? Because we've got to break center of gravity every time. If I don't break a center, I cannot do this. He's too strong. But if I go outside of his cone of power out here, I can do anything I want to do. This is an old man's art. The last three people, well, not the last couple of people, were in the 70s and 80s. You can do this the rest of your life. You've got to break a center of gravity. Whether you break it like so, or you break it like so, once you break a center, you don't have to do a lot of work. And that's good because I don't want to be the one. Alright? The third principle we're going to show you is Teatro Te Ho. It's taken from the Philippine martial arts, but it, it translates in every way you If he grabs me, there's no way he can stop me from doing this. If he grabs me here, there's no way he can stop me from doing this. So all I want you to do is just turn this over, turn this over. And that's without going outside of his own power. Okay, first one for everybody. Everybody help? Come on. This is your seminar, not mine. He grabs, and I want you to grab as tight as, I want him to grab as tight as he can. All I want you to do is turn this. There goes his center. I'm not throwing him. He's throwing himself. I'm not doing anything. This is an old man's eye. Let's go. Okay, you guys want to go among everybody, please? Stay on the floor, please. Human, body, human body's a marvelous thing, okay? But it only has very few parts, not counting the internal organs. So you got two ball and socket joints. You got two ball and socket joints. You got a hinge joint, if you're Italian, excuse me, please. And you, and you got a hinge joint, a hinge joint, modified hinge, modified hinge, and the head. That's it. There's nothing else. If he grabs here, the way God made him major, this is going to bend, and I don't have to why? Well, if this was made to bend. I'm not doing anything. This is the way nature made it, huh? I'm not doing a thing. Nothing. Nature made this arm to bend, like so. All right? Now, if he grabs two hands, it's, it's easier to do two hands because these just spread out. And I broke his kazushi, right? I broke sand. Right? Okay. So, just use the, the anatomy against itself. And you say, well, gee, he's very old. You don't have to do all that. Then if you want to get like John, he's younger than I am, he will wait for the we'll do it like John does. All right. Grab it, grab it, and all I want. Now remember, he's not going to stand in grab it. He's going to kick you, he's going to hit you, he's going to slam you into a wall. All you have to do is just raise your arm. Right. Oh. Sorry, Chris, didn't get you to it's a simple level. Still, okay. so all it is is a level. Pure leverage. Real quick. Get outside of the cone of power. You guys other than the Yaki Arts, Ikkyo, Nikkyo, Sankyo, Gankyo, Yankyo will not work inside of the cone of power. Okay? Uh, sorry, if, he, if he's grabbing me here, if I try to go like this, Nothing's going to happen. But if I move this lever around to here, I'm outside of this cone of power. Then he has no power. He doesn't have any power at all. Go outside of the guy's cone or mass. Always outside. If he's throwing a punch, say, go outside. Just go outside. And don't do one, two, three. I, I'm too old to do that. I have to do one. That's the next <coughs> principle. It's called Koichi. It means oneness. I'm not going to block. Boom. Boom. All right? I can't raise my legs that high. Yet. So when I do this, it's all one. It's all one move. And it's all. It takes one tenth of a second. Not three seconds, not five seconds. One tenth of a second. 
Okay? So Kobayashi, try it up. We don't do box, we don't have stances. But what happens when you do a stance? If he's in a Shotokan's Shotokan stance, Shotokan is a great art, but he has no he has, he has, he has no lateral stability. The minute you go into you're standing here like this, normal. You're talking to somebody. I don't, hey, how you doing? How's how's mom and dad? You know, you don't stand like this. You stand like a normal human being. So don't get into a stance. How many fights you see with a guy? Yeah. Doesn't work that way. All right. Get outside of the cone of power. Can I borrow you, sir? You're a fast-sized young man. I'll pay you later, by the way. <laughs> Big guy, right? If he grabs me, what am I, crazy? I can't go against him. That's nuts. But if I go outside of his cone, he has nothing here. He doesn't have anything here. There's nothing. You have to go outside of his cone. Try going outside of the cone of power, please. Three minutes? OK. Wait, okay, three? Uh, can everybody see these weapons laying here? I was going to use them. Uh, somebody said before that weapons always came first, not the hands. All right? The weapons always came first. I'm not going to use them tonight. Uh, everybody carries something today. Everybody in here carries something, a knife, a cane, a stick. Thank you all. Thank you for participating. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, you know, for inviting me here. And uh, it will always be a pleasure to be a part of this uh, wonderful organization. My name is uh, Ravi Pambuan. I'm from the Philippines. Uh, I'm just going to show you guys uh, some kids' uh, toys. So. <laughs> uh, this one is the horse whip. This is the bull whip. You guys uh, see it uh, a while back. Uh, they have, uh, in the Philippines, they have so many kind of uh, uh, weapon that uh, they, every day they use. We have a uh, bolo. I know you guys probably have the bolo. Or the crease, the more uh, blade. That's all a uh, combat uh, weapon. And they have a cultural weapon also. And then they, we train in the stick, OK, for a safety uh, uh, precaution. And then we have a soft weapon, like the whip, the, the roof, things like that. OK, so I'm just going to show you uh, some uh, you know, different you know, that we just uh, play around, OK? Anyway, I have uh, two of my, a couple of my students here. Come on. We have Guru Woody and Guru Travis. OK. Uh, I'm going to do this uh, you know, later on, but I want to explain some of the uh, stuff we do in the Philippines. In Philippines, we have uh, 7,000 islands. It depends on, you know, it's a low tie or hot tie, OK? And sometimes it's more, sometimes not. <laughs> But anyway, you go, uh, they have a different uh, dialect, a lot of different dialect, okay? Some uh, people, they call the egg, egg. And some people, they call the same egg, chick, okay? Across the, the road, okay? But anyway, uh, but everybody is uh, training our knees, okay? So if you are, uh, you know, the discriminador, we have a language of how you identify or how you communicate with other uh, people. Okay, I have a uh, Guru Woody here and Guru Travis, they will demonstrate. Okay? You no. Do yeah, we, they're gonna do the maths. From example, this guy is from uh, other uh, part of the country, maybe in the south, he's in the north. They speak a completely different dialect. And, but they will understand how they do the match. The rules of engagement. The rules of engagement. Okay? So go ahead. I gonna explain one by one. They move the stick and the in the dirt, you pick it up. You accept the fight. He, he said one more time. Go ahead. He pick up the stick. You accept the fight, arms and legs. You accept it. He reply, arm, leg, <laughs> yes. Okay, so they agree. 
All right, and then they have another one. If had, you accept it. Said no, the one that had, he won the dead death, death match. Okay, so that's you putting the cross and the stick, it means dead, you know. So who gonna go home with the family the next day? <laughs> okay, so we don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that much. You just want arm and legs. And then he reply, arm and legs, yes, they agree. So now that, that these two people, they, they agree of what they uh, said in the top stick, and now they're just going to do the carenza. There we go. They gonna, this is like a, a dance, okay? It is a dance, okay? You, you, you show them uh, how you move your stick, how you move your body, and they try, you know, to testing out one another. Yep, that's it, you see? From there, it's close. It's, a, it's getting close, and that's the way they're gonna uh, striking, all right? They don't, they don't hit, hitting each other, they're just topping it up and things like that, just a friendly uh, a match. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, good. Stop. Into. Okay, and then they're gonna go back in the in their uh, short position. They will say, "Yes, I respect you, and we be friends again." Okay, so that's the one. Nobody get hurt. Thank you, and that's. Gonna go round. Make round. Don't make me. <laughs> go get it. Go here. That's my friend. <laughs> Getting too old for this. Anyway, the one I'm gonna show you guys is a it's a everyday uh, uh, self defense that we always do. Okay, it's like the animal 
they can always defend themselves without going in the school. Like the cat, dog, bird, snake, okay? But we have those two. I'll give you a sample. He finds, I uh, scratching my hair, okay? Once again, I was uh, brushing your teeth. Got again, do this, tying your shoes. So every day that, uh, that uh, we do is we can defend ourselves. But how to discover it? It's like a boat. Will it? It's in the boat or you're praying, you're begging. Double ones. Okay. Filipino art or, uh, or the Indonesian Malay art is always humble. They don't want to fight. It's always begging. That's why when you see the, the Oriental, yes, with but those smile, you know, get you somewhere else. Okay? So, for example, I said, no, see? Double punch. See? But it's like a boat. You're cutting from the water. Okay? So, he finds slow. See? Okay, that's it. It's another one here. You get the uh, knife. So, knife, I don't care how expert you are. You play with the knife, you're gonna get cut. Okay? You take a shower, you're gonna get wet. <laughs> so don't tell me. You play with the knife, you're gonna get cut. But it's not the way he wants you to be cut. That's the difference. Okay? So don't be mistaken. Oh, I'm good with something. Yes. I don't wanna be hero and six feet under. All right? I don't wanna be a fighter. I wanna be a lover. Okay. <laughs> so it means, don't try the water if you don't know. Always be humble. It's like my dad said to me. I teach you, uh, tell to my dad, Dad, I want to uh, learn your art. But uh, he said to me, well, you do your uh, kung fu, do your boxing, you do your karate. That's enough. And I tell him, well, I want something else. But they, he don't teach me since I was 16. But uh, he teach me one move and practice that for a month. I get the move, get the stick. Don't you stick? No stick. This is the very move that he teach me. He, he hit me. It's this, I slow it down to you. See the hands here? He hit me here. Okay, that's it. But I tell him, I want to more. Well, you just don't want to defend your, yourself. You're collecting art now. So that's why so many of us, we learn different martial arts. We are collector, all right? All art is good. So we're just gonna, gonna you know, cultivate it, what you guys learn, and all that stuff. But one art is enough, but we are, else for knowledge, for more uh, adventure and things like that. That's why we have many arts in ourselves. Okay? We all right? Okay. All right, well, the time is up. Dabba dabba do. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs>
and then you can experience how much you can learn in a very short time. Uh, first thing, if you want, you can stand up here. We just start first. Wing Chun Kung Fu, the first principle is flow, and we want to do that here. Uh, so those who like, they can just take a basic stance, open like this here, put the hands up here, maybe try to follow, it's fine. And then you just do one hand after the other here. Get it slow in front of the chest here, so slow first, and then slowly speed up. So in the end, you come, like relax, so just try to punch as fast as you can. Just follow, come be more in the center, don't worry. Okay, then understanding that, we just pair off two and two, can I borrow real quick? So the next exercise is like a basic reflex, like you stay like this here. So I punch, you punch, I trap, me. okay, I take it down, I come, you trap me down, and you punch, like in sequence. One, two, three, four. Yes, good. Okay, so try two and two together, okay? Is it trapping? So just continuously go. Just try two and two pair offs, right. okay? Maybe. When my hand is here, I'm on the pressure points, right. see? But the moment he moves, if I move slightly sideways, what happens? I mean him, see? Right. I can trap, I can lock, I can use. You know, seeing his pressure points is very easy. I won't do it, I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> okay, so just do the same move. Those who feel fine, one hand in front, if he's moving in, just follow, you punch, see, just go. Don't push. Right. A lot of people, they used to do hard blocks. Now, if he's punching solid, that's fine. If you block me, okay. If you block me to the side, thank you. You block me upwards, it's fine. That was sideways, it's okay. <laughs> like upwards, oh, well, yeah. see, you just follow. You block downwards, I say, thank you again. It flows. Now, I don't want to wait. This will be a wait. You block, I go. It's a wait. I don't want you block. You block me. Anytime you block, see, that's why we do these punches. Right. You see? So we are always one step ahead. Now we got legs also, okay? So that means as soon as you're moving in, you're gonna have the hands and the legs. You move again, I'm on, see? You go here. You control. <laughs> okay? But this is too much at the beginning. So what we do is as soon as you move, we're gonna do like a pak sao. But don't hit it sideways, I need strength. How far we have to go? Punch? Nothing. See? <laughs> All the people that want to move so far, this is fine, you got strength. Man style. Okay, but this is a women's style. We want to save energy. Because maybe there's another guy there. <laughs> so if I take you all the time, he's going to whack me in the meantime. See? So what happens is you come in, I just want to go. And then, please. <laughs> and again, center line principle. I don't want to confront you here because you've got long arms. I use my shoulders, so it's fine. I can use my fingers, even longer range. All right? So two principles. We have triangle opening up, okay? And we have the stepping principle going inside. If you're scared, just wait, because they want to hit you. So they're gonna come close to you. Right. If you're fine, you can move. Alright? So what you do is you just as he comes, you move in. Now if he's shorter, you can go down. If they're very tall, you can go down and still can come up. And you see again where I am. You know? Right. We don't want to move backwards because A, I don't know what is in the back, B, maybe some other guys, and I get distance again. I don't want to move to the side because the moment you come, I move to the side, you move here, like you attack, see? I'm out of distance. I don't want that. So we have the paksa move, which is like a sideways move, like you come, see? I can use the knee here, see? Hi. And then again. So with the first movement, Control the arm, strike, and the knees, one move. Hi. So you can try, just do this in rock if you come again, please. One, <laughs> you okay? Oh, fine. See, it just goes on. And then it will just fly in, pop. This move will take care of his elbow, right. the face, and the back. Right. Uh, twist again, his neck is gone, and that's it. Right. It's a little bit a lot of twin. <laughs> uh, those who don't like to go so close, use the leg. You see how this move? I kick. Now you see where I kick? I kick to the knee. A lot of people do a straight front kick. Now, most of the time, attacking people are bigger than you, taller than you. So if I kick front, where are you going to collapse? This one. Nah. Oh, okay. If I break your leg like this, see? Hi. Right into me. I don't want that. I want to have a free highway for myself to go. 
right? Nice. So what we do is when he comes, we do a central line front push kick. Lifting up the knee, but at the same time I lift up, the heel comes up like in a curved motion. So what happens? If you punch, I go for the knee, see? I twist it. I'll take care of the kneecap, thrust it out if I'm nice. If I'm not so nice, I kick one inch above the knee. Why? I get the knee and the hip. See, like you move in, I go here. Pack. I'll take care of both. Mm. Now once I kick here, the body goes backwards. Nice. But the front collapses. So again, nice. see, like you come, I go in here. Chop. Then I crack down on the shin. If it's still there, you can go in. But actually nice. one move is enough. OK, so second exercise. Just like I come, you take care of me here. Punch in low if you want, or high. Same time moving with the knee. Ah, see? Yeah. Now if you move this knee, you're better off. Hi. Because if you move this knee, I'm in the, see? You Hi. give me away. Hi. Whereas again, if I use the cross knee, see like this, I cover up my central line. Hi. Any move you do, I'll be just here. Hi. You want to kick? I just pull, you know, breaking balance. I can break his ankle here, just move inside. So actually, if I want, I do slow motion like this here. Take care of the knee and the hip. Control the hand. Take the face. Scratch down the chin. Take care of the ankle. Move in. Break the leg. If you like, you see from here, going through, take the hand to the face and take care of the real leg. So in one motion, how many strikes are you going to do? I do slowly one more time. You see? Just one, and then he goes on. You see? So please, when you exercise, careful. OK? <laughs> try. Turn two, just try. You can do just do pak sao or use a punch at the same time with the kick. Yes, you can go low or high. If you feel comfortable, you can even go low high in one motion. See, because the moment you feel, he's in. Same time, you like the leg, you can go one, two. I take one leg and the second leg, then hit the knee. Sure. OK, please, one more time. So again, those who like to go more sophisticated, but usually it's not necessary, because the moment you punch, you fire. <laughs> See? The moment you punch, I fire. The moment you come, I trap, I fire. The moment you come, I, I go. The moment you come, see, I take it. And we go. So you just fly. All right? Try, 22, OK? So just pack, trap, and go in. All right? Yes, see? Not so difficult. It's all one. It's all one. It's only one move. Yes. Don't go outside. OK, one more time, please. Again, what is the short distance from me to you? Like this, straight line. What is the fastest move? Straight punches around. Straight shot. You sure? Who is f you're fast in punching? No. You're fast? You're fast puncher? Who's fast? Chris. Please. OK, never mind. OK. You see, you have to hit here, straight. Boom. Yes, try again. Try. Try. <laughs> I'm dead every time. <laughs> see? Boom. The moment you move, that's boom, we go. Same again, you come, boom, we go. See? Hi. Same again, pop, we go. Because read the motions. Five points. Hi. Shoulder, shoulder, head, hip, hip. You know the move is coming, but the eyes will show first. So look in the eye. Now we don't have to wait because he's penetrating us already. Right. He's coming into us. This gives us the right to move in already. Right. So that means in our winching system, we don't wait for the attack to physically come in. Right. The threat is enough already here. Right. And that's when we move. OK? Right. So we go one step in advance. Those who like to move in here, we go like this side, see? If you like, OK? But again, you just move in here slightly sideways. All the people want to hit your head. You know? Sometimes like you move in here, chop. Never mind, you go down and then back up so you can follow. All right? Just move your hands soft, relax. We have what we call vibration power. All right? When you punch, how you punch? How you punch? I just open fist. That's what most people do. I call hip and shoulder power, turning power. In a Kung Fu, we don't punch like this. We use what you call the center muscle here. Then the side. OK? So it's a shocking vibration power. You want to go inside. If I hit like this, you're fine. Like this, you don't want to be hit like this. Hitting place, again, 
A lot of people I see, they want to hit here. True? Right. You know how many people I saw broken knuckles? <laughs> and on the roadside, you bloody asshole. <laughs> you got the teeth in here afterwards from these guys. I don't like that. <laughs> so you just punch here on the side, see? Very painful. You know the guys who attack you, they got big necks? They can take punches sometimes. When you punch here, I'm sorry, they can't take it. Okay? They say, I got no bone here. It's okay. I take care of the face, see? All right? But we hit. And we hit and we hit. Now when you strike, like you hit here, please. How far you reach? Try again. Up to here. Now, if I'm here, how far you penetrate? Just right with nose to And that's the problem when you train. Most people, they train distancing in the practicing lesson exactly up to the body. You never, no move, huh? okay? You never go through. Hi. All right? So what I want you to do, but please slowly, learn how to move through, all right? So the moment you move in, go through. But again, cover your body, all right? So one more time, if you come in here, I can go here. If he comes very strong, see, maybe I cannot come here, then you go around. He comes there, I go down. He comes up, I go in. Hi. But we forgot the legs, huh? So we see again. <laughs> One, you come in, two, you come in, three. He's constant and he's on reflexes. All right, try again, okay? Just be, just two and two together. Oh. <laughs> you want to test me with that? Okay, just so strike with two. And Laguna, please, uh, Today I will demonstrate some technique of Laguna. And, uh, some of you might not see this, some of you might see it already. Uh, first of all, I would like to show how sharp this blade is, you know. So I don't practice it with a dull weapon. You know, if it's dull, you know, I cannot finish the job in the farm. So it has to be sharp. And that's what the thing is, you know. If I, if, if I, I cannot this cut in one, two shot, it's not going to happen. I have to keep it this way. So in order for me to finish the job, it has to be sharp. So, just uh, everybody see, every time somebody attack me, all I have to do is just chop them and later on cook it. <laughs> that's, uh, thing. this is the ball of uh, I would like to demonstrate also some of the native uh, weapon. Uh, this is what we call kalasad, and this is the bat. I carved this myself. I copy to the page of Maguro uh, Pambuan right there. <laughs> <laughs> see, you can see it's still. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll demonstrate this. Okay? If you use one weapon, one stick right there, it's considered as ball. So, go right here. She came out from the side, and she came in right here. And she just tried copying it. I just went up and hit it up. Okay? And at the same time, if I'm finished with it, I like him to stay there. I stopped the boot and he said, okay, this is your cross. You already uh, baptized everything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one thing. And if he reverse it, and he's the one using the siba, and he goes like that. I'm just going to be right here. He strike it right there. Bam! He's dead already, but I want to chop him to cook it, right? Boom! Right there. And that's one, right? Or if he used this now with that, he'll uh, run. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> I run behind him. He's going to be right here. <laughs> it's going to be a simple fight, you know what I mean? Like I told you, my name is Jabba Chan. <laughs> To demonstrate that double stick, and most of double stick is I like everyone. Okay, uh, double stick is always done twice strike, one here, one here, right? This time I'm going to show you something else. I like to demonstrate the beauty of this arm. See who that was. Came up, here. Came up from here. Two, three, four, and back. One, two, three, 
Okay, can I get a moment and four? And five is in, and strike, hook it up, cut the neck, chop it up.
I go above right here, put it up. Hey, I'm in. Which one you want? You want this? Here. I have this. <laughs> and that's what it is. It's joking. Again. Okay. Tell them it hurts her. It's her. It's her. <laughs> you know? Go back again. I see the pants. Huh? Huh? I go for the groin. Get it out. And that's what it is. He's going to turn around, give me the left. And that's what it is. Arm, leg, leg. You OK? Yep. Bar. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be happening. I hear you. Oh, my goodness. Where I am? I'm going to be right here. Wow. Here. Go. You OK? Yeah. I broke his ball. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Now you make him mad now. You have two kids now, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I go back in, I go back. Hey, where are you going? Hey! Is that what it is? Lock it up. Here! <laughs> oh my god! You don't want to give up again! <laughs> the last one. He tried to pick me on the bar. I'm drunk. <laughs> you know. Oh my goodness! Oh, what happened? Come. Oh, what happened here? And then finally, we saw in the parking lot. He tried to pick on me. Choke, brother. Oh my goodness, that's all you can do. I'm choked now, hey, what you want to do now? Huh? One more time. Think again. Oh my God, that's the powerful hair. Right here, hit it up. Okay, here one more time. Hit it up. Okay, lock. You okay? Yeah. Arm bar? Yeah. Okay. And finally, I told him finally, he doesn't give up. Here's the thing right here. I go back in, I'll yeah, move right. Hello, hello, hello. Move back in. Thank you, John. You alright? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's outside. Go inside. Your boy's coming up. Pull the back and take it down. Why not? There we go. Are you okay? Yeah. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's keeping me tired. Whoa! Oh my god, give me my five for the time. 
It's for me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. You don't want this? <laughs> 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 you don't want this? Oh my god. I'll give it to you. I oh. I it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Ask him to to strike this a few times with reverse punch. Okay, I want you guys to just keep that in your head what he just did. Thank you. Anybody else? One more person. Anybody else want to give this a shot? Don't be shy. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And what they just did is typical of what happens. Um, but what I found that that particular method of punching actually failed biomechanical analysis. Because what happens after 100 times of doing this, when I evaluated it, the punch does not move in a straight line because the joints don't move in linear fashion. They rotate. That's called angular rotation. So you can do this 100 times, and each time the, the, the pathway of the punch will be different. And actually, it's an elliptical pathway. So what I felt was is that you should augment that, not drastically enough to facilitate that. So um, if you look at how this thing behaved when they were hitting it, and how it's going to behave when I hit it, you'll see that there is a difference. And what I'm deliberately doing is allowing my hand, my arm, to to take this elliptical shape from the shoulder to the target and then back. Now, the, you want that to be very narrow. You don't want it to be outside of your shoulder limit. And that's one of the changes that I made in this technique. The other thing that was critical is the sequential and continuous rotation of the joints in executing a technique like this. Most people, they concentrate on the hip, but actually the punch begins with the legs, okay? So when you push against the floor, that energy has to be coordinated in such a way that when it gets to here, it's, it's just about equal. Okay? So the ankle rotates, the, the knee rotates, the hip rotates, the spine, the shoulder, the elbow, and then this energy explodes through the wrist. Now, each of those rotations should happen in a continuous, sequential fashion. So if I'm standing here and I do this, if you look at what's happening with my body, is that my shoulder is very involved in this. And that, that has been something that, that I spent a lot of time on, is how much shoulder involvement should be in the technique. And believe me, it's, it's considerable. It's just as much as the hip. OK, so that's that. The, the, the other technique that I subjected to analysis was blocking. Now, most of us were taught to block, inside block, outside block, low block. We were all taught to do this. And most of us use the ulna and the radius as our blocking tools. Well, what I found, I'm also, I also practice medicine professionally. <laughs> so um, what I found from even seeing my patients, some of my students and other martial arts in the Philadelphia area are my patients, that these people were developing problems with fascia. Fascia is a connective tissue that covers the bone from smashing their arm against each other. So, and the reason why that happens is because this is a very narrow surface. You increase the surface area, it spreads the force out. And you're using more of the, 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 the muscular part of your arm to execute this technique. Now, bear in mind earlier I talked about 
that ellipt the elliptical shape of that, that, you know, punch. So can I get two volunteers? How about the two people who were here before? Okay, I want you guys to know how to do inside block, both of you. Okay, I inside, inside, right. Okay, so you can punch at him. No, go this way, turn this way. Okay, good, go ahead. Okay, now, you punch at him if you don't mind. Okay, good, thank you. See, see what they're doing? Now, um, Randy, can I use you? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Go this way. Okay, now go ahead and punch. This is what everyone's doing. Here's what I found as the compromise based on biomechanical analysis. Punch. You see what I did? It's in, using the inside portion of the arm. Leave your arm out there. And it's, it's an elliptical shape. Now, you saw what these gentlemen were doing. They were blocking, like, the, you know, gross movements. And I always tell my students, never back up to go forward. Never. In other words, this is a gross mistake because it leaves you completely open. Now, you know, there is a wide range of execution. You can literally do this technique by sitting here and doing that. But the point is, leave your arm out, not this, but the, the legs are doing the work. Now, you see what happens to him. It's in, a, it's in that elliptical shape pattern again. See what happens to his arm? Look at the behavior of his arm as I contacted it. It's this way. So exposing his vital areas. So what I've done is change most of the blocks in my system to conform to this principle. And what I've noticed is that, through again analysis, is that a lot of these blocks forces the, the attacker to turn. And you notice how they were blocking inside. I discouraged that. Standing inside and blocking like so is not a very good idea. Okay, you always try to seek the position of advantage by getting to his periphery or his blind spot. So, so it's not a good idea to stand in someone's power zone and do that sort of thing, okay? Um, so, and that's true for all of the blocking techniques. I also subjected the same kicking skills to this as well, and that was a whole other thing. Being also a Taekwondo practitioner, that was a major thing for me, and I didn't have to make too many adjustments in kicking because Taekwondo people kick well. But one of the things that I subjected to analysis was a front kick. And what I found was that a front kick was not very effective above the waistline. Not very effective. As a matter of fact, it failed miserably. So I've adjusted. I love to kick high. But when I found that, I mean, how many of you in a fight ever hit somebody with a good front kick and double them over? It rarely happens. This kick is really meant from here down. So I've changed that, okay? So you know, if you guys want to give it a try, those two techniques where you block, standing here, in that elliptical shape, and open your hand, when you punch, you notice how my shoulder, how my arm returns to this point without fully extending the arm. You know, there's so much about this that I can talk about, and time is, <laughs> is my enemy this morning. But, um, what I'm going to do in another three months is publish my findings of this research that I've been doing. And hopefully it will help to generate some interest in scholarly work in, in, in the martial arts. Because we're the only ones that's not doing it. Everybody else is. Okay? So um, the time left, let's look at the kick. Um, can, I, can I get a volunteer to kick? Would you like to try and... Okay, roundhouse kick. Okay, here, 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 come here. Right there, roundhouse kick. One more time. Okay, you try, roundhouse kick. Okay, now 
The thing about kicking is that your hip and the knee is critical. Now, if you notice what they were doing, there was a lot of follow through with that. It's not necessary. When you hit a target, your, the, the striking portion of your body should not stay in contact with the target for more than an instant. Okay, it shouldn't stay in contact. Then you're just displacing the target. You're not really hitting it. All right, so when you, when you kick, that should be the effect of the target. Okay, that should be the effect of it. One of the things that I found out is that most of the martial artists in the Philadelphia area, they were, they're excellent practitioners and they, they look good at the technique, but when it comes to hitting a target and generating the kind of force necessary to stop a target, so then some, some adjustments has to be made in the way training is conducted and how the technique is conducted. Okay, so when kicking, the knee and the hip should generally be the overriding factor in kicking, and the rest of it is like a whip-like effect. And they were kicking with their base leg pointing towards the target. What they need to do is turn this out to widen their base, create more balance, and point the knee to the target and allow the trail part of the leg to whip into the target and back again, right? And that should pretty much be the way it is. Okay? So, Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, again, you know, if you guys want copies of when <laughs> this thing is published, just see me. I'll hand you one of my cards. Or you can give me one of yours. And I'll be happy to send you my work. And you can critique it. You can criticize it. You can do whatever you like. But I think it'll generate some healthy academic interest in improving martial arts skills. OK? Thank you. Yes, my uh, name is Jens Fricker. I came from Germany and um, I'm a practitioner of uh, traditional Shotokan Karate Do. And on my right side, this is uh, Mr. Heinz Scheiderreiter, a practitioner of uh, traditional Taekwondo. Today we are here to uh, demonstrate some techniques of our arts and uh, I hope you will enjoy this. Um, we start with a demonstration of Shotokan Karate Do. And um, most of the time, people talk about traditional karate do, especially Shotokan in Europe. They have a picture in mind which is only uh, practicing an exercise in kata. Doesn't matter how uh, difficult or how easy it is, but normally the picture you have in mind is uh, practicing kata like this, you know. And um, keep walking. Okay. Karate can be so much more than only demonstrating karate. You know, the um, most spreaded rumor about, especially the traditional Shotokan karate guys, is that we are only able to walk in straight lines forward and backward. You know? And this is the main reason why we have to prepare our bodies for being punched and being kicked. But that's not the truth, of course not. There are a lot of uh, different movements for uh, preparations not be there when someone attacks you. Like this. This is a direct line backwards. Some cops. <coughs> a direct line backwards, other side. Some bauch. Forwards, Go out of the line. Uh, Halbkreisfußtritt, mittlere Stufe. Yes. This is the, some basic movements for being not in his uh, power line. The, the main thing about uh, exercising Shotokan, especially in, in fighting skills, is if someone thinks you are a target, and tries to punch you. Kannst du mich mal angreifen? Ich stehe, ich bleibe so stehen. Einfach mit dem Vorschuss drauf. Don't be there. With the best reason, which means concrete. Don't be there. Or other side. Don't be there. You combine it with technique, which means. Come here. Come here. 
Hold on, right? Ayo! Be directly out of his line. You can combine it with the foot techniques, not my leg technique. Ayo! Ayo! You can do it on the other side, on the open side. When I'm looking for. of the attacks, um, and we can, of course, stay directly in this line. Which means punching and blocking at the same time. It's possible we saw it yesterday. It's a uh, technique to um, uh, counter an attack without doing any movement, which makes him tired. You, know? so you can use it backwards, too. But um, even in Shogun Karate, if you practice this traditional ways, there are possibilities to throw, to take down, and to control the uh, opponent. Like uh, we use the Carter as the book of techniques, which means we try to use similar techniques from Carter to defend ourselves. Like this. For example, like this. Or like this. You're dead and when you're in this position because nothing is working any longer. You can't do like this, like this on a short distance. So you have to train this too, which means in concrete, do it like the small circles. Do it like small circles. Which means I'm gonna push it. Like this. You can see there are a lot of techniques, even for a takedown, for example, for Carter. You can do it the soft way, like this, so it's possible for him to go down, or you can do it, it looks similar, but it isn't, believe it, like this. So you hurt him while going on the ground, which means in concrete, use all of the fingers afterwards. And then you see he's going directly to your knee. concerning karate. And we learn from everyone who's part of the martial arts family too, like judo, jiu-jitsu. So the art has to work in every situation. It has to use everything you know to practice self-defense, not only karate. So it's a, a wide world of martial arts and we are using what is working, for example. I hope you enjoyed this uh, special um, I look to the Shogunhan Karate Do, and now Mr. Shadar will demonstrate some techniques from Take One and Two. He uh, demonstrates some short distance range attacks to show you that it's uh, very important that even the footwork and the fist work is working on a short distance range. He's demonstrating it very slowly. 
And now a little bit faster. We'll show you some uh, different techniques for uh, short range taxi to take one. See, he's uh, immobilizing his body. Body checking and uh, breaking the ribs and punching through his head as a final technique. Breaking technique, breaking technique through the arm at first, then through the knee. Mobilizing takedown and final technique. Same thing faster. Okay, then there's some defenses against the stick attack. Yeah, it's, uh, he told us that it's very important to uh, be out of the power line of the stick, which means to be as uh, fast as possible to go outside this technique. Okay, he's doing it the wrong way to demonstrate it. He's going outside and he will break it, but he's directly with a leg into the power line of the stick, you know? This is the right way. The whole body is out by the range, break the arm, disarming and do a final choke and final technique. Thanks again to the head from outside. Out of the line, out of the power line, immobilizing the body with counter striking, disarming. And counter attacking. Sorry, sorry. Guitar. First of all, I'm really honored to be here, uh, to be able to share the arts and stuff that I have learned, and to give people a little bit of idea about the arts of uh, Bushindo, of which I created, and of ninjutsu, which I'll be showing a combination of different things. For me, it was a really great full circle of because uh, I started in the heart style. Shotokan type styles of karate to move to what I do today. So it's kind of like a full circle for me. There's really a lot of really great and incredible people here. And again, I'm just really, really honored even just to be standing here, much less being able to give an opportunity to share uh, the martial arts with you. So thank you very much. And uh, my system that I put together, Bushin Do, comes from taking the word Budo. Uh, which most of you understand is the is a warrior path, and what I saw is that a lot of things have come to, and even there is, though there's some uh, great qualities and things like ultimate fighting challenges and things like that, that I also looked at for a lot of people that the spirituality or the connection of becoming a human being is somewhat being missed, the aspects of becoming a, a better person, and to me that's really what martial arts is about. It's about kicking and punching, but it's also about becoming a better human being. It's got to get right on the inside before it gets right on the outside. We learn to fight, we learn to kick, we learn to punch. We need to be protectors of the peace. And if you're not strong in that, and you're not centered in that, and you die, then a part of peace dies. I'm all for world peace. I'm all for us as uh, 
to be a living example of what it takes to be courageous in this life. Because a warrior, to me, is someone who is courageous enough to be impeccable. Impeccable in everything. Aspects of their heart, their ability to, not, to put down their defenses uh, unless that they have to use them. And those defenses may be your intimate ones, may be the most challenging ones to put down, to hug someone that you don't know, to help, help someone that's in need. That's really what martial arts and a brotherhood is about. So today, we only have a few minutes, so I'm not going to speak much more. I'm going to uh, show you some principles of movement. I'm going to try to do some things maybe that haven't been demonstrated because there's a lot of really wonderful people sharing incredible arts. You'll see a mix of some different things. I studied uh, Escrima with Grandmaster Gilbert Tino, uh, who is an incredible Escrimador. I'm very, very grateful to him and grateful to Grandmaster Masaki Hatsumi and Ninjutsu of taking me on as a personal student which led me to 25 trips to Japan, which led me to also studying with Grandmaster Mishida, who is one of the top sword teachers in Japan in Iaido and Bata Jitsu. So you'll see a combination of a lot of these things uh, today. Uh, I want to give thanks to both my UKs, to Ur Bodin and to Mark Murdoch. We haven't done this before. They were kind enough to be my UKs today. So will you start with Ur? So basically, a couple principles of the number one thing of a person that's punching at me is what? Not to be there. Whether I move, whether I block, whether I do, the art of distancing is what's important to me. Is that I want to be outside of this punch. Whether it's here, whether it's here. And I'm just kind of warming him up and the microphones as well. <laughs> so I want to maybe move my body. Take this person down. And I, again, I'm just getting him used to. I'm at change from something entirely different. Most of you understand what these could be. They could be a lot stronger, a lot more powerful. Just right there. Get it done. You may not have a lot of time, but you usually don't. Because usually there's someone else maybe in the process. He punches. Boom, someone else comes. No, you got to punch, sir. Okay. Maybe one person's going to grab. No, you got to grab, sir. Thank you very much. Because I may want to use this. He's got his energy. He's going to punch, right? Punch. Use his own energy against him. Trap, lock, choke, if necessary. Going a little fast. Got a lot of little things I want to show. I want to be outside of this. He's coming here. The distancing is what's most important. Because if he's probably going to cut back. Oh, let's stand here. <coughs> cut back through my throat. It's down. Use something to lock, break, cut, or use the back of the blade. Choke. Thank you, sir. Um, <coughs> Mark. We use a lot of different weapons and things in our art. That This is called a Kusari Fundo. Very dangerous. It's usually made out of metal with solid metal ends. Okay, we use a rope for training. So <coughs> if he's punching, these are very deadly in here. Also, you can redirect. You have to lock, choke, pressure points, smack. Person has a knife. Take away the blade. A little slower. Bring it back. Tie him up. Have to be aware of the next person. <laughs> Maybe he's coming. Slow.
Make sure you have your microphone, take your knife back. Now he has that. He let go. <laughs> if he doesn't let go, find a way to take it back. So, countering. One of my most important principles to me is ability to flow. What you did. I'm not trying to defend myself here. I'm just not letting him do whatever he wants to do. Thank you. <laughs> you think I can just give him the weapon easy? So, okay, hitting around behind grub. See that? He's coming to grab. Putting something in between. Otherwise, you're going to choke me. o'clock in the morning for me. <laughs> See? Defense has already started. Choke. Ground smack. Hit. He still has it in his hand. Wrap it around his wrist. Pressure points. Drag him along. Get the rest of the idea. Right. This didn't seem it's really important. As long as I'm outside of this distance, you can't. Distancing changes. The person has a sword. What's the most important thing? It may not be in there, right? It's a new weapon. With that? It's a new weapon. This one here? Yeah. You could use it, but we're not paid for it. Yeah. Inside. Dangerous? Sure. So try to cut to the sword, it will be. Or a little leverage. Okay, um, trying to ski. Like, uh, that works too. Just like ski the body. No, friends. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Right, here So, as he comes from a cut, a more difficult. I, I don't even have to have it. One more thing. Claws. 
rip. These are metal claws. Very, very deadly. See the last few impressions. <laughs> So that's fine. Whoops. So sorry that was a little rushed, a little quick, but I have a lot of different aspects and things of our art. I want to show a little bit more body movement than uh, anything else. So thank you very much. Very much. Okay, yesterday we got a few volunteers out and we showed them one of our very basic forms that we do in Wontai. Well, we uh, had at least a couple of them to try to pursue it and got up with us and so forth, so we're going to see how they turned out. The only thing about it is it can be habit forming because now I understand that they're putting spite on us to work out this afternoon and probably tomorrow with them and show us a couple of our weapons that we're doing and like a couple of you know how the girls can affect you and so forth? Our young men said they'll do it. Okay, I'm going to go. The watch out for them called Blue Five. itself as exercise and warm up. We'd like to show you our first basic Wata form and then I know everybody's going to jump up. We'd like to get some volunteers and we're going to show you some of the exercises that we do off to the side in preparing for practice and we're going to ask you, we're going to ask you to do them with me. I'm going to do them with you but we're going to ask you to only stop when we, we stop when we tell you to stop because we want you to stop at a certain point about halfway for two reasons. Number one, if you're not used to it, we don't want anybody to strain themselves. If you're not used to it, you can. And secondly, I stand if I want you to show me up. <laughs> okay? This is our first concert that we do, a real nice form called Sigma Cut. Means the beginning form. Thank 
touching the deck. <coughs> Keeping my feet rigid, my back slightly arched, I'm going to attempt to bridge myself to come straight over and touch the bottom of the floor with just the soles of my feet. My back should still be slightly off the deck. Now, many people can do this one. But keep in the same position without drawing my legs and my feet still extended, leaving myself still back up straight. Okay? That's it. Hope you don't talk funny at <laughs> Okay. This is worse on them than it is on me. I did this one time in a gymnasium. I seen a couple of pipes. I was doing it for a demonstration for a football team in Newburn. And so I said, well, that's going to be good, those iron pipes. I grabbed the hole and pulled him right out of the wall. <laughs> we had water off. It saves a lot of pressure on him. Shut up! Hey, 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 just want to try this real quick. You don't have to. We don't have to. Come on. They can go right on the side. Yeah, in the back here. Okay, back. Yeah. 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 Change the slide right there. Change the slide. Um, my colleague here, they represent different organizations in Puerto Rico, but I would like them to include themselves. Giovanni? Dr. Giovanni Acevedo from Puerto Rico, International Democratic Federation. Professor Ruben Torres. Ruben Torres. Giorgio Jujitsu from New York. Professor Robert Rosado. Robert Rosado, Okinawa Karate Jitsu, Akusu no Kirkai. And the UK for today. Big Victor. Okay. Before we start, because it's so early in the morning, I would like to people to join in the workout. Um, we want to start with some warm up, uh, a little exercise. I would like to, at the same time, I would like to apologize because my English is not that good, so very good attention and thank you. Ruben? Okay. I know in this format, um, it's a little difficult to get cooperation. I'm not even going to have it. I would like to use the time. Since, since we're budgeting the time among the four of us and the group, we are going to show um, aspects of what we do. We're not going to be able to express our best or our complete system. We have not involved each of us for our accompanying groupies or students that we have raised in internships and loans and nice products. So we're going to give aspects of what we do. Um, May I share something with you? When you get to a certain level in the martial arts, in the beginning, a lot of people, what I've been seeing here is very intimidated. The volume of knowledge and the years of perfecting your technique. I don't know why I'm in the room with you. I would be cleaning your dojo floor. That's where I feel I belong. But I want to express a point of being Martial art is a point of being and a doing. While the spirit is in the form, we're expressing the form of things. I would like to share a routine of warm-up that I have been doing for 32 years. Every technique has a breath. The student's responsibility is to find that breath 
and as scientists investigate their argument and be defiant to the teacher and find out and investigate, to arrive at a personal experience, then we are truly sharing and transmitting our art. to save money. especially in striking. Almost a lot of jiu-jitsu do throwing and lock, but jiu-jitsu has striking too. You can hit the person. So I want to show you some basic techniques you can use in the, the street. Great. Great. The person grip you, you strike, chain hand, looking for the finger, pressure to the finger, up the chin, and strike the throat. <coughs> Another technique. The person grip you here, right? You throw, but more than you. Make a little pressure to the ribs, and with your elbow, just strike the nose. Oops. Sorry. Third technique, punch. Punch. Strike, strike, go. Take the elbow, twist it. On my last technique, the throat. As I grip to the throat, strike, pressure point, hit the ankle, the, huh? the knee, break, inside, throw, hit the ribs, grip the hip, there you go. Up. On my last one, the hands. The person with the hand, strike, switch, twist, bring it, hit it, and press, press in the ribs. Oops. <clears throat> this is some of the basic technique that we use in our system. Um, I would like to show 
Inside our system, how we will enforce and punch it. But I would like to, uh, my colleague, Professor. Well, thank you, uh, for everybody that we have today. Bring me the opportunity to express myself in martial arts. Uh, I do karate many years, and after many years of practice, I developed this punch. It's an internal energy punch. Uh, we do this uh, in very short range. We can put the hand very close to, to, to the opponent and strike him. So this is an external, external punch, okay, external punch. That's external punch, okay, it's hard, hard. This is an internal punch. Okay. okay, you can see the power. You can feel inside the body how the energy across across his body. Uh, also, we do pressure points. I do knockouts with pressure points. Stealing the energy of the body. So, in, in a fight, in a fight, you can be probably conscious of something, and you start to grab and do your, your techniques, okay? Uh, In some situations, the guy strikes, you grab him, you grab him. Then you set up the point, grab, grab. <coughs> set up the point. Okay. That's a little touch. That's a little touch. Yoik. 
each. Right? Knee. Sun. She. Go. Sambo me. Yoi. Each. Right? Knee. Sun. She. Go. Roku. Go same. Great. Okay. Turn around, please. We also do in our, our form striking patterns with this. And this is the eight step striking pattern. And it can really vary. We don't do too many kata because sometimes kata doesn't work out the way we want it to work out. The attacker doesn't go where we want them to go. Great. Goodbye. Each. Knee. Up. Sun. So. She. Go. Yeah. Roku. So. Chi Chi. Hachi.
So some of the forms that we do are base. That's getting out of the way of the attacker so you don't get hit. Come on up, gentlemen. Uh, partner up. So, upon me. Number one was the flow, and the other was the counter of the counter. He'd constantly be telling me, Danny, you must have the flow. If you know how to counter the counter, you will not be beat. So this, is, this has been the crux of my whole training. If he strikes, you'll notice where a lot of karate people will go boom, and in the beginning this is fine, they'll stop, and they'll go here, and they go bang, etc. But anybody that's, I always figure anybody that's mad enough to hit at you once, may hit at you again. He strikes, I freeze, whap! Here comes a punch, here comes another stick, which means, as far as the application of the flow, when he strikes, you want to continue moving in this fashion. And then if you want to strip, you can come out and do something like that. Now, like I said, with my teacher, he did just a tremendous amount of counters. You'd strike on this side, he, ne next thing is he'd flip the cane off here, He'd strike on this side. He'd come off here with a lock. He usually never stepped on my face like that, though. It was very nice. <laughs> He'd strike over here, lean out of the way, and strike in this fashion. Or coming over here, Abanico coming across. He liked locking. He'd roll the person around. And then he'd do various types of pins, if you could do as well as a counter strike this way. Coming off striking this way, same thing. Coming down here, up here. Personally, I love the knee. I love the knee and the ankle. Mainly because a lot of people in their thing is stick fighting, they're thinking, bang, the knockout here. I have 10 minutes left to go. And this is good, but if this person has this hand trained, then you'd be in here, bang, boom, and then he has perhaps a stop here, he rolls, maybe he conks you, maybe he doesn't. But he strikes, pop him right on the side of the knee, pew, there it is, right out over the top. Same type of thing, he strikes, you're here, bang, you've got this type of pin. I mean, there's a whole ton of different types of techniques you can do. One of the things I've always liked, I've always liked the art of disarming. My teacher told me a tale one time where he was in, uh, uh, in the Philippines. He was challenged by the mayor's son. Now, my understanding, and anybody from the Philippines can go ahead and prove me wrong because I've not been to the Philippines. So this is my teacher's story. But mayor's son challenges him. Now, the mayor, he's got some armed, 
bodyguards, and if he cracks his son upside the head, bodyguards are going to plug him. So he comes in, the guy hits, bang, boom, and he gives him back the cane, and this is the whole story, he gives him back the cane, and continues to tell him how good he is while he disarms and he gives him back the cane, and so forth, and like that, and he, there you, oh, you're very good, and, and so forth, bang, here, and you're, you're very good, oh, you're excellent, you know. This way he defeats the guy, doesn't get shot, and then he becomes the bodyguard of the mayor, which is, <laughs> he told it a hell of a lot funnier than I did, but you get the idea. My viewpoint overall on martial arts, and this is if you can get away with it, because anytime you have somebody with a weapon, the weapon is very unforgiving. If you saw, uh, uh, got a bone, and if you saw Mr. Castro, man, you'll see that when the shot comes in, it's very un unforgiving, very unforgiving. You get cracked, or you get later on today with some knife ex experts, uh, Ray Donaldo showed how steel is unforgiving. Master Arms Brian Frank is going to show how steel is unforgiving. You need, to be, you need to basically be on top of it. Now, one of the things that I've worked a lot on is if the person stops the counter. You're here, you strike, you come in here, bang, bang, and removing here so that you can strike. Or the same thing, you go here, and you're in this position here. Or you're here and you counter with the hands. One of the things that, let's say, if I, if I come in and I strike and he does a disarm, say, he knows that, ah, oh, that's good. Thank you. Disarm, countering the disarm, you're here. He comes in here, right in there. Or there's some times where you go here, it's just best to let go of the stick and pitch him. Now, I like the stick, but there's times, I mean, so far, I'm almost 50, I've gotten very lucky with my knees, I don't have to do this yet, which means I seldom carry a stick. So, the person strikes you also have to know how to manipulate whether you're going to counter strike here, whether you're going to duck and come in here, or whether you're standing awfully stupid. Strike here. Thank you, but, but strike here, please. And you have to take it on a meaty part and strike in here. This is what I call a worst case scenario. Here, I'll give him a cannon. Here, that'll hurt. No, 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 you're supposed to hit me with that one. Oh, you got a bigger one there? Yeah. Okay, cool. So he, he strikes. Now, you all know on your swinging type weapons, this is where it hurts. Boom, right here. He comes in, he fires her, go ahead and fire her. Uh, yeah, right, like I'm going to take it like there. <laughs> Good luck. But he fires, you insert, um, fire please. Thank you. You're here, it's very, very easy. You're in here, etc. Now, the interesting thing is, you've seen this all before, haven't you? Pretty much everything here. I'm, I'm doing nothing new. Whether you're doing Aiki Jiu Jitsu, you're doing Filipino martial art, you're doing uh, uh, a lot of different karate styles, it's all, it's all basically the same. This is one of the things my teacher kept impressing into me. It's all the same, it's all the same, it's all the same. His emphasis was on the flow, his emphasis was on counter the counter. Now, when we talk about principles that, uh, that I started watching and telling, one of the, one of the principles was that, left, uh, other place, that way they can see it. Okay, you've probably all seen this throw. He come in and the person goes zip, like that, the person goes down, right? Anybody have any difficulty executing this throw? Yeah, we have a hand over here, okay, he's, he's honest. Anybody have executing, uh, difficulty executing that? No, then you all know this then, good. Then you can just mentally skip over this part and then we'll go on to the next part. But the interesting thing is that I've noticed where, like the guy throws the shot, step away please. Look at my body position. People do this. 
My back isn't straight. I'm trying to push with the tricep, which is a real, unless, unless you lift weights, it's a real weeny part of the muscle. But he strikes. I'm here. Stay, 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 stay. Notice I invade his space here. His upper body is out of, out of alignment with his lower body. Boop. He goes down. He throws, zip, and you see, just straight on, his upper body goes just like this. It comes under the heading of a willingness to occupy the other person's space. You know the old bully that used to come up and go, oh, yeah? They'll occupy your space, see? Most people, you have this little safety zone. You come up, you start talking here, no, you come up and start talking here, then they get close and they want to, no, 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 no. And this gets in the way of a lot of different types of off-balancing moves. If he throws the punch, you're here, you notice how close I am to him. Do it again. Bang, here, stepping behind, very close, occupying the position, hook, and then pin or, if need be, bang there. Now, same thing if coming this way, and again, creating a position where his upper body is over his hips. Here's his leg. This one's kind of a nasty fall, but if you throw the punch. And working this over here, so and like that. Locking, same type of thing. I have two minutes, so I'm going to go into uh, helium mode here. One of the things that I've known about locking is that if you fight, you know how to do this one? You know how to do that one? Ah, he knows how to do this one. That's really good. If you fight the lock, OK, go. I fight, he'll get me. One of the things I found, and this gentleman over here had marvelous responses against locks. I do it just a smidge different, but we've got basically the same thing. He goes into a direction. Go ahead. Oh. Now, we'll do this slow because it looks like he's fluffing on me. But the idea is, stay. He's pulling from this distance to this distance. So instead of letting him lead me, I contribute to the motion. When I contribute to the motion, he goes for the arm bar. See, he wants this. And he goes, I give him this, and I reverse him. Or the same thing. You know that one? Yeah, see, he goes here, and he goes, ah! It's no fun. But he goes here, and I just continue his action. Bip. And I'm here, and I see he needs a shave. OK, so uh, I've got the wrap-up sign going on. First of all, thank you very much for your attention. I should be clapping you guys, because you get great attention here. Um, like I said, what I'm doing is this is my attempt to continue and advance my teacher's art into the new millennium, as it is with each teacher, their student, that one, their student, and so forth. This is somewhat of my tribute to him and a continuation of my own growth, my own skill, and so forth. So thank you very much for being a very attentive audience. And from what I've seen on the list, we've got a ton more coming up. Stick around, you're going to be like very well with My thanks to you.